In order to correctly identify anatomical features on the scapula, one must be able to distinguish between the left and right scapula blades. The glenoid cavity forms the socket for the head of the humerus, the ball and socket uh, joint of the shoulder. This obviously must face laterally. If your shoulder joint was formed from the medial side of your scapula, your clothes would fit differently. Secondly, the spine and the acromion of the scapula face posteriorly. This is an easy one because one can readily palpate this with your fingers. You can feel the spine of your scapula along the posterior surface so you can uh, demonstrate for yourself that this is true. Finally, the inferior angle is clearly that part which is attached to the large triangular section of the scapula. Should this be the superior angle, then you would notice this because when you looked at your neck in the mirror, you would see that big triangular sheet of bone. So obviously this must be the inferior angle. You would notice if it was any different. Once you identify the glenoid cavity as the lateral portion, the spine and acromion as posterior, and the inferior angle as facing inferiorly, you can distinguish between left and right scapula blades. The scapula is roughly triangular, and once you distinguish between left and right, you can easily identify the superior angle, the inferior angle, the medial or vertebral border, and the lateral or axillary border.